Hey everyone, thank you for joining us today uh, for our tooltip session. My name is Martin and I work in customer success here at Crowdmark. Today we'll be taking a look at best practices when it comes to printing and scanning in an administered assessment, which is the in-person paper-based assessment. Please note that today's session will be recorded. I'll, I will be sure to email it to everyone later today, and there will be some other helpful resources in that email as well. Now, if you do have any questions during today's session, feel free to type them into the chat box and either uh, my colleagues, Jesse, Maggie, or I will be happy to address them. There's also a feedback survey that I've sent in the chat. We're always looking for ways to improve. So if you do have some time to fill it out after today's session, uh, that would be greatly appreciated. So our goals for today include discussing best practices for setting up, printing, scanning, and uploading administered assessments. And we'll also go over some tips and tricks to minimize QR code errors, maximize auto matching rates, and maximize multiple choice auto grading as well. Now, just as a quick reminder, Crowdmark's administered workflow is comprised of five main steps. So the first step involves setting up the assessment where the instructor uploads and configures their blank template. Crowdmark will generate unique QR codes and UUID strings on each page, an auto matching region on the cover page, and also a multiple choice bubble sheet if your exam does include multiple choice questions. Once the settings have been configured and you've confirmed that the template preview looks correct, you can generate a PDF of all of your booklets for your students to complete. So you would just print the exact PDF file that Crowdmark has generated for you, uh, staple each booklet, and then have them ready to be distributed on the exam day. Students will then be given a single booklet with unique QR codes. Like any other exam, they'll be required to fill in their first name, last name, and student ID number in the auto matching fields on the cover page. And then they'll proceed to answer the questions in their booklet. Uh, once completed, booklets will be collected. Uh, they're going to then be scanned and then uploaded back into Crowdmark. And for anyone who will be completing the step, we do highly recommend that you follow our scanning and uploading best practices just to ensure that the process is smooth and so that your, can, uh, your team can begin grading as soon as possible. Lastly, after the booklets have been uploaded, the instructor or facilitator should ensure that booklets are accurately matched uh, to the students in the course. Let's now talk about the three processes within an administered assessment that rely on printing and scan quality. So first is our QR codes that are to be read by the system. And these QR codes tell us which booklet each page belongs to and where they go. Therefore, these should be clearly printed on each page and scanned under optimal settings so that they can be detected by Crowdmark software. Next, we have OCR, which reads the student's handwriting on the cover page and then matches uh, each booklet to a student. And then lastly, we have OMR, which uses markers on the multiple choice bubble sheet to locate and read the student's filled answers. So when it comes to scanning booklets, there are a couple of uh, printer or scanner settings that Crowdmark highly recommends uh, for you to configure to ensure that QR codes can be read and for OCR and OMR to function optimally. So this includes using the grayscale or color setting when scanning. At this time, Crowdmark is not fully compatible with black and white images. In the past, we've seen black and white, black and white images cause uh, issues when it comes to reading QR codes. And this is because it causes QR codes to bleed into the page. Next, you'll want to set the scanning resolution to 200 DPI in a multi-page PDF format. And this should result in images with the dimensions of 1700 by 2200 pixels. It's also recommended to enable a darker setting if your scanner allows for it, as it will help with reading any faint 
pencil marks. And if you're using multiple choice bubble sheets, you should ensure that your scanner makes any extra space around the scan white. Uh, if the area where the staples were cut off is scanned in black, it may interfere with the multiple choice auto grader. There's also one more thing I want to mention here, and it's to make sure that each scanned file is less than 500 MB in size. Uh, with that being said, it's not necessary to upload a single PDF with all of the booklets. Uh, file uploading can be completed in batches, and we re recommend scanning 2,000 pages per batch. So if you do have a large class, you can divide the booklets in batches and then upload the files in multiple batches. And then I also want to quickly add that CrowdMark does accept scanned images in JPEG format. However, uh, the preferred format is multi-page PDF documents. Now, when it comes to printing booklets and booklet organization, uh, we have a list of best practices as well. So there are certain features on your printer that may help to streamline this process, such as uh, collating booklets and subset stapling. Collating is a way to organize booklets, ensuring that pages are printed in the correct sequential order. And subset stapling tells the printer to staple every X amount of pages. Alternatively, you can also use paper clips. Um, you'll also want to make sure that you are not printing in the draft setting as pages do need to be clear for our system to read pages. If you are stapling your exams, you'll want to be extra careful when removing them uh, just to ensure that you aren't cutting any part of the processes that CrowdMark needs to detect and read the exam properly. Uh, for this reason, you may want to use paper clips instead of staples. When it comes to batching pages for scanning, you might want to think about how the pages are stored. Uh, you may want to organize them in a way that's easy for you to uh, find pages if you do need to go back and rescan them. So you might want to consider organizing the booklets based on last name, room number, or section. Lastly, when it comes to printing and scanning, you'll want to avoid resizing the pages. Uh, or page borders so that the auto matching region and multiple choice bubble sheet is not skewed for detection. Next, we'll take a look at CrowdMark's QR codes and what they consist of. So again, QR codes work to route the pages to the correct place for grading. And each QR code is unique to each page of each booklet, meaning that no two QR codes are ever the same. So the top right corner of each page will contain a unique UUID string. Um, under that, we have the exam slug used to identify the exam. We have the booklet number, uh, page number, and total number of pages in the booklet. And then finally, we have our unique QR code. Now, the cool thing about our QR codes is that um, in the case that you accidentally cut off the staples and drop off or drop all your booklets on the floor. Uh, you don't need to reorganize them for scanning. You can simply scan them in any order and CrowdMark will redirect each page to the correct booklet uh, in the correct order for you before you begin to grade. As a result, um, QR codes and UUID string information is very important and should be printed and scanned without any obstructions or damages. Now for some QR code tips, um, you want to make sure that there is going to be enough QR coded booklets generated for all of your students. Uh, you'll also want to make sure to create extras in the case that any booklets go missing or to account for any damaged booklets. You'll also want to refrain from photocopying any booklets as each booklet is unique and can only belong to a single student. Uh, ensure that there's going to be enough scratch pages within the template so students have enough space for extra work. And these scratch pages should also have QR codes to ensure that they can be graded within CrowdMark. Any pages without a QR code cannot be graded within CrowdMark. 
Lastly, if you have students writing accommodated testing, uh, each student should receive their own booklet with a unique QR code as well. All right, so next we'll take a look at some common errors and how to troubleshoot them. So in both cases here, uh, each page was scanned incorrectly, both resulting in illegible uh, QR codes. And to fix this, you can simply just rescan the pages and upload them back into Crowdmark. In this next slide, we have a less obvious error. So in example one over here, uh, the, oops, the QR code is unclear and uh, could have been from either the printing or scanning step. It looks a bit pixelated, also containing um, some small white dots as well. As a result, this QR code cannot be detected and routed to the correct booklet or student. And so it's very important to make sure that all printing and scanning settings are properly configured to avoid this. To correct any errors, we always recommend rescanning and re-uploading the affected pages. And in the case that the QR codes are illegible again the second time, you do have the option of manually matching the page by UUID string as well. In example two here, um, cutting off the staple has resulted in a black triangle after scanning. And because the system uses black triangles to detect multiple choice bubble sheets, this will impact the ability to read the QR code. Now, typically uh, we see this when, uh, we see this error when uh, the outside area of the page is scanned in black rather than white. Um, so if you set the scan to auto detect the bounds of the page, uh, that should help. In example three here, uh, we have white space in the QR code. This one is also a little less obvious, but if you do compare the two, you can see the difference. And this typically occurs when the pages are scanned in black and white. So the solution here would to be, uh, would be to rescan the pages in grayscale. When it comes to auto matching, Crowdmark uses optical character recognition to automatically match students to their booklets. And it uses the position of the student detail box to find that information. Something to note is that um, the system will require all three pieces of information. So first name, last name, and student ID uh, to make a match. And it will need to match that to the student information in the course roster. Another thing to note is that our match rate is pretty high uh, being calibrated for 98% accuracy. So if the system is unsure, it simply won't match the booklet to ensure that booklets are not being matched to the wrong student. Um, Crowdmark believes that it's better to provide no match than an incorrect match, uh, because this would result in students having access to another student's grade and submitted work. Now, in the case that you are experiencing a low auto matching rate, um, these could be some of the common reasons why. Often it's due to the student's handwriting as it is sometimes illegible or faint. It could also be due to the scan quality, um, placement of the QR codes and the student details box may also have been modified in some way. Sometimes student information is missing from the page or the course. Uh, for example, their student ID may be missing on Crowdmark or they might go by a different name than the one listed in the course roster. And then lastly, it could be due to um, lack of sparsity, which refers to the difference between each character um, where our system may have a difficult time reading the information. So an example of this would be two student ID numbers such as one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, five. Now there isn't enough of a difference between these two IDs for our system to confirm that they are different. So it will leave them as unmatched um, for an instructor or facilitator to confirm. And so to get the best out of auto matching, you'll want to scan using a darker setting to pick up any faint handwriting. 
Um, you'll also want to detect or auto detect the bounds of the page to ensure that the QR codes and auto matching region uh, are placed correctly on the page. In this slide, we have a scanning example called impossible matching. So here the instructor had three different versions of an exam and decided to print each version on different colored pages. So this top file here displays um, JPEG files um, and how they're uh, displayed or interpreted by our OCR system. And these bottom files here um, show what the system was able to see once it was rescanned again in grayscale. So once this particular assessment was rescanned in grayscale and uploaded, our system was able to auto match the booklets just fine. So if you do come across any matching errors, there is a high chance that once you rescan with the proper settings, Crowdmark will replace the bad scans and match as expected. So for tips on getting a higher match rate, um, you'll want to follow our best practices for printing and scanning. You'll also want to ensure that the course roster information is complete with numerical student IDs and ensure that first and last names are accurate. And you can also encourage students to use block letters, write clearly and not to cross over the lines when writing in their information. For multiple choice auto grading, um, OMR will locate information on the page using these three uh, black triangles for positioning. Um, again, it is crucial to ensure that these triangles are scanned clearly. Otherwise, the system will have difficulties with auto grading the multiple choice answers. And to conclude today's uh, training, we do have a couple of additional tips for auto grading. So you'll want to make sure that the black triangles are not cut off. Um, writing should not touch the triangles. The area around the page should be white. Students should fully fill in each bubble when answering a question. And rescanning and re-uploading can often fix any detection issues. So in this last example here on the right-hand side, we do have a bubble sheet that uh, has issues being detected. Upon first glance, um, the page looks completely normal until you take a closer look at the bottom left of the page. So you can see that the black triangle has been cut off during scanning by a folded corner. So if you are experiencing uh, auto grading issues, you'll want to ensure that you are paying attention to each of the black triangles and QR codes to see if anything looks wrong. And that concludes our session for today. Um, does anyone have any questions or comments?